How's it going, folks? I'm Des with Desfit, and this is the new Edge 830 from Garmin. So today, Garmin announced the new Edge 830 alongside the new Edge 530, and I do have a video about the 530 as well, so make sure to check that out if you haven't done so already. And both of these share nearly the exact same feature set, and they packed a lot of new stuff in here, such as new performance features, mountain bike dynamics, and a lot more. However, the interface is a bit different on the 830 considering it's using a touchscreen rather than all physical buttons on the 530. And there's also an additional navigation feature on the 830, so it's probably worth your time to watch both videos just so you can see the difference. I've been testing both of these for about the last three weeks or so, and they've been pretty darn solid. And this isn't a full-blown review video, by the way. I'll probably have a long-term review out, maybe in like three or four weeks. Today, I'm just more going over the new stuff that they put inside. And these are just loaner units, by the way, and this isn't a sponsored video or anything like that. But I can already say that these are worthy successors to the 820, 520, and 520 plus. When Garmin released the Edge 820, it was nice to see a touchscreen version of the very popular Edge 520, but the touchscreen left a little bit to be desired because it was a little bit laggy and kind of unresponsive. But I'm happy to report with the Edge 830, the touchscreen has drastically improved and it's nice and responsive to touches and swipes and it's snappy and predictable. The display is also now 13% bigger at 2.6 inches and it's housed in a slightly bigger body. They relocated the micro USB charging port to between the lap and start key, so it's a lot more convenient to charge. And the battery is advertised at 20 hours and it is gonna be compatible with the Garmin charge pack. And then moving on to the interface, I guess, well, first off, Garmin actually doubled the processing power with the 830 as well as the 530, and that definitely helps a lot, especially in regards to navigation. But on the start screen, you'll see numerous ride profiles that you can scroll through. And if you long press any of these profiles, you can edit the settings of that profile right there. Below that, we're gonna have navigation where you can browse a map for a location and then drop a pin to navigate or to save that location. Below that, we have courses, and here's where you can actually create a course on the device itself using the course creator or round trip course. You can set parameters for popularity-based routing, routing modes for different types of riding, as well as calculation methods and whether or not you want to have it try to lock onto roads. Then you can add locations using a host of different options and it provides a pretty slick interface to create courses on the fly. And then there's also a new option for mountain bike trail navigation. So with this feature, you can actually search for mountain bike specific trails with filters for a start location, whether that's your current location or a location that you can choose from from a map, as well as a difficulty rating, even with filters for access roads as well as distance. Below that, you can search for different points of interest as well as cities, addresses, intersections, and even coordinates. There's also this little target icon in the lower right hand corner where you can select the search area. Backing out of navigation, next up we have training, and the first thing you're going to see is training plan, where you can view your training plan that you can set up in Garmin Connect. And then the rest of the options and training are pretty much all carried over. In the settings menu, history is just going to be that, your ride history, but below that we have my stats, which has a lot of new stuff. First, you're going to see your training status, and then below that we have your VO2 max, as well as training load, but if we tap on this section, it'll give you a more detailed breakdown of VO2 max, training load, and then this next screen is new where it shows your load focus, which shows your training balance within certain intensity levels as well as where it thinks you should be for optimal training balance. Going down a screen, this is gonna be something new as well and that's gonna be altitude acclimation, which shows how you're reacting to changes in altitude. For instance, I started testing the 830 at my hometown elevation at about 5,000 feet. Then I spent a week in California where it was sea level and then I came back. So this is the figure that it's gonna show as I'm reacclimating to my current altitude. In addition, there's also another performance feature called heat acclimation, which shows you how well you're reacting to changes in temperature above 71 degrees Fahrenheit. You will have to make sure to pair your device to Garmin Connect Mobile though before starting activity, about three hours before, since it does utilize the weather stations for this function to work. All right, so backing out of that, here's where it shows your recovery time. FTP, if you've been using a power meter, and you can also take an FTP test if you really want to. Your stress score, performance notifications, then personal records and training zones. And then next up is yet another new performance feature and that's power curve. So just like FTP, you will need a power meter of some sort of flavor to get these metrics, but power curve compares your power at certain durations over a month, three months, or over a year. Again, I've only been using it for about three weeks, but here's where you can see your highest power for those predetermined durations. And then next up in activity profiles, there's another new performance related feature if we go into the alert settings. So if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, we have eat and drink alerts. If we enable this feature, we have the familiar alert by time and distance, but below that there's actually something new called smart alerts. 
With nutrition and hydration alerts, if you're basing that on duration or mileage, well, those aren't really adaptive and they're kind of unrelated to your actual effort. So the 830 utilizes data that's being collected on the device, such as your heart rate, distance, elevation, as well as weather to deliver smarter alerts. And if you're using a power meter, and you don't need a power meter, but if you're using a power meter, it'll actually deliver even smarter alerts. And then you'll also be able to track consumption with a few different options for volume and bottle size. And then you can set these up per activity. In terms of sensors, you can pair the 830 to AMP Plus as well as Bluetooth smart sensors. And then there's also gonna be a lot of new stuff in the safety and tracking menu. You'll get instant detection. And then below that there's get assistance, which can send your location to emergency contacts that you'll set up in Garma Connect. You'll have your actual emergency contacts below that. Then there's group track, which is familiar, but then there's bike alarm. This is an interesting little feature. So let's say you want to grab a cup of coffee at a coffee shop or you need to go use the bathroom, but you need to leave your bike unattended outside. What you do is you enable the bike alarm feature on the 830. And then if your bike starts to walk away unexpectedly, the 830 will actually put off an alarm. You'll set up the bike alarm by setting a passcode to disable the alarm. But what's also neat is that if you're paired to your smartphone, you'll receive an alert if your bike moves. And it can also automatically disable it if you're within close proximity. You'll activate the bike alarm by swiping down to access the controls menu and then going over two pages. And then what's also nice is that there's a countdown timer for this just in case you want to cancel it for any reason. And then here's what it sounds like. There's also two new features that aren't in the settings menu but are sort of related to safety and tracking. But these are going to be found in Garmin Connect Mobile. And that's going to be Find My Edge. And this is kind of broken down into two different parts where you can see the last exact GPS location where your 830 was paired to your mobile device. And then there's the actual find my edge feature, which is akin to kind of like find my phone, which is found on a lot of smartwatches. So basically it'll make a beep on your edge device, assuming it's on. Going back to the menu really quick, below safety and tracking, we have connected features and it now does have Wi-Fi on board. And it also supports extended display mode, which will mirror the data that's being collected on certain Garmin watches. So I think that's pretty much everything new in regards to the menu and the settings. But before we get into the mountain bike specific features, there's also one performance slash navigation feature that I want to talk about, and that's going to be Climb Pro. So as you're approaching a climb, it'll display a chart of the grade, which is color coded for different grades. It's also going to show your position during the climb, and then each section of the climb will tick off as you actually complete it. And then the average grade here you see is the average grade of the remainder of the climb. And this term may actually change because this was pre-release software that I was using. So moving on to mountain biking, there's a new fork side mode, which automatically displays a map of the area you're in when you come to a stop. And it shows you upcoming forks in the trail or just kind of your general location. But as a little bonus, Garmin is now including the Trail Forks app preloaded in both the 530 as well as the 830. All right, so now let's wrap things up with what I thought was pretty fun to test, and that's going to be mountain bike dynamics. First up is grit. Grit is Garmin's way of quantifying how hard a ride or trail is or was. It doesn't take into account your actual effort. It's just the rating of the trail or the ride itself. So it uses GPS along with elevation and accelerometer data to deliver a grit score for your ride. And for my testing, I found that elevation gain had a very big factor in regards to the grit score. The next new mountain bike metric is going to be called flow. Now, flow is kind of a subjective term, but I think the way Garmin implemented it makes a lot of sense for what most people would define as flow. So unlike grit, the flow rating does have to do with how you ride the trail, primarily having to do with your forward momentum. And the more you maintain momentum, the better flow score you're going to achieve. Okay, so grit and flow are interesting new mountain bike metrics, and they are probably aren't necessary, but they are kind of neat. So with grit, you can compare how hard this trail is compared to this one. And then with flow, you could re-ride a ride and see if you could actually improve your flow rating. But now let's move on to what I think is the most fun feature of the 830 as well as the 530, and that's the fact that it can automatically track jumps. So what happens with this is that as soon as you land from a jump, an alert will automatically come up from the bottom of the screen with a little beep that shows your hang time, distance, as well as speed for the jump. And then my only advice with this is that make sure you keep your eyes on the trail. I think Garmin did a good job with the jump alerts and how they display on the device itself, but what's even cooler is how you actually view this data in Garmin Connect. In Garmin Connect Mobile on the last tab of an activity, there are these little gray icons in the bottom of the grit and flow graphs. And if we tap on either one of these graphs, it'll display the graph in landscape mode. And then you can drag your finger along the chart to see the jump data during the ride. However, you may notice that it could be tough to distinguish individual jumps if you're doing numerous jumps in the session. 
However, if you go into Garma Connect on a desktop web browser, you can see the entire jump list with all the metrics laid out, then a trophy for your best jump, as well as cumulative totals at the bottom for distance and hang time. So as you can tell, Garmin used that two to three years since the 820 came out to some good use. They put a lot of new features in the 830 and they improved the touchscreen performance drastically. And if you know me, I like me some physical buttons, but after using the 830 and the 530 side by side, I kept on trying to tap the screen on the 530, but both have been great. And finally, let's talk about price. The 830 starts at 399, whereas the 530 starts at 299. And at that price, I don't think there's really anything else out there at this point that can touch it. And I was just hoping for a better touchscreen, but then they also included all those new features. So if you're a 520 or 520 plus owner that always wanted a touchscreen, then you may want to consider the 830. Alternatively, if you're an 820 owner but want some more responsive touchscreen, well, there you go. And then finally, if you're a 1030 owner but wanted all those features in a smaller package, you may want to consider the 830. Oh, and by the way, Garmin did also announce the new Speed Sensor 2 as well as second generation Cadence Sensor that you're going to be transmitting both Ant Plus and Bluetooth. And I'll have a video about that maybe in about a day or two. Anyhow, thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for plenty of sports and fitness technology reviews that are coming soon. In the meantime, happy riding.